This is part 10 of the basic Python programming tutorial for new and intermediate Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a. And in the previous two lessons, we took a look at modifying the mesh data within an object and then organizing your code so you can reuse the code. And in this uh, lesson, we'll take a look at actually moving the objects themselves. So you'll see the origins of the objects will move as well. Because that way, like for instance, in the uh, first six, seven lessons within this series, we had placed all those uh, cubes and planes in circular fashions like that. But you notice as I was putting them in there, I was modifying either the size or the location on the fly. But after they were in there, I didn't really have a way to access each individual one. And that's what we were going to do here. So if whatever you have in the scene, we can access like that. So let me go take a look at a little piece of code over here that I have just saved here on the side, a couple pieces. So this is right here. This is really the critical part. We just need these two lines of code like this. So we'll copy that and bring this over into here. And before we actually get the mesh itself, like this, here's our mesh. We'll just move this down and we'll paste this in here. And this says get the active object. So really in this case, we're assigning the active ob we're assigning the object name cube. Well, this is not really get the active object. We'll just say get, it's really get an object. <clears throat> so we'll say the current object is equal to bpy.data.objects and in the square brackets and in parentheses, uh, not parentheses, in quotation marks, cube. So that's the name of the object. So that should be named cube and it is. That's icosphere. We can get whatever we want just by putting in the name right here. And once we have it in here, then we get the mesh. So the mesh is instead here we said get the active mesh from the previous lesson was bpy.context.object.data. Well, that was because that's that's based on what was selected active in the scene. But now we want to use the mesh that's associated with this current object. So we use current object dot data instead of bpy context dot object dot data. So that's really the difference. If you want the active object, you use this. If you want the current object, you assign it, and then you use this. So in this case, we'll just comment this out because we're not actually looking at the active object. We want whatever one in the scene. All right, in fact, we'll verify that. Let's just say the cube is the active object. But let's say we want to modify the cone. So I'll just turn this into cone instead for the, for the object. So I get the cone object, assign, I get the mesh associated with the cone object, and then we're going to do the same routine we did before, except we'll turn this into maybe We'll make it maybe more obvious because maybe it's not going to be obvious. Three, like this. And then here's where it updates it. So, um, okay, let's run it. Let's see what actually happens. So we'll run it Alt P. And so there it is. It modifies the mesh of that particular object right there. It wasn't a very exciting modification what it did, but. <laughs> it gives you an idea and this is a really important step because now not only now that you have the action object itself then you can do other things with it you can move the object. Well, let's just see I have over here in text here here's another way this is now current object that location there we go so now we'll just in the X and Y direction now what the heck with that we we'll just make it in the Z direction let's just change this and We'll put it over in the other file, like that, and we have the cone, it's going to bump it up, well, we'll just say minus three. We'll just put it back to its original location in this case, and and then even after it's finished, we can update it. So that's updating the mesh, that should really shouldn't matter, so we could probably just put this location anywhere, we could put it down here. So we'll just move it in the uh, the Z direction current object which is going to be the cone and then I'll say plus equals five 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 like that so as you take the current object after the mesh is modified back to its original location and do it let's press alt p see what happens okay so what it does it returns the data in the mesh back to there and at the end down here which of course we 
should always comment. Move the object up in the Z direction. All right, so, so now you have access to either the object data or the mesh data. And with the uh, placement of it, like we've seen in the other applications, that'll give you a, quite a few more tools to work with for whatever applications you might be working with. All right, well, that's it for this lesson. Good luck with your applications, and I'll see you in the next lesson.